airport travel. That frazzled experience. It's already a stressful situation. Most of the time you're just going through point A to point B. It's no vacation. Getting checked in. Waiting in line. Not knowing if your flight is going to be on time. Get here to get there. Security, boarding, baggage. I guess people in airports are usually busy. They're like, you know, focused on what they're doing next. It can be a lot. Besides all the stressed out people, here you'll also notice how many travelers are looking down. I'm just reading my Facebook messages. People like Jane. I'm a Facebook junkie. <laughs> yeah, a little bit guilty because I came in the front door and charged right to our gate. This was a photograph. Colleen McPoland is SeaTac Airport's art director. Uh, which was translated amazingly into the mosaics. Sometimes she can transport travelers like Katie. What do you think about it? It's beautiful. She's here on a layover. I was looking down at my phone and I was like, what am I doing? You know, like I can do this anytime. I can do this on the airplane. I can do this anywhere. I can like enjoy the scenery. Excuse me, scenery? Yeah. As you can see, it's beautiful. If you are also an airport art connoisseur, you'd probably like SeaTac. Travel and Leisure magazine recently named it one of nine American airports for art lovers. Oh, what? I think that's really cool. That's crazy. What a fun thing to explore while you're here, you know? Just look around. There's sculptures, there's paintings. See colors, red, blue, black. Skyline pictures. Down there, there's a big wall of windows. The airplanes suspended from the ceiling. I see colors in motion. Bones and dinosaurs and all that stuff. It goes on. Because let's get real. Terminals can tend to be pretty blah. Still, it's not a museum. You're here for one reason. But this time of the year especially, you need to look around, take a breath, and enjoy. Most people are so focused on where they're going and where they want to get to that they don't enjoy the scenery around them. With photojournalists, what a fun thing to explore while you're here, you know? I'm Ryan Takea. And just keeps the journey going, the adventure going. King 5 News. Starting at the airport. You know Netflix. And you might know Melanie Presley's pain while streaming movies. It's always at the good parts. You know, my it's about to get real. The Shining. Well, when he's coming through the door. Here's Johnny. That seems like an inconsequential first world problem. But in our digital age, it's more than friending, following, and streaming. It's about being connected. That's tough to do when your connection is like dot 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 dial, dial up. You've got mail. But how could that be since Xfinity delivers America's fastest internet according to speedtest.net. Up to 40 megs of CenturyLink internet. There's all this talk going on about fast internet, but we found out there may be something going on with your wife. Wi don't you hate when that happens? Buffering. We asked viewers across Western Washington to test their internet speeds using speedtest.net. This is an experiment. It's not scientific. For five days straight, twice a day, viewers logged on. Some had pretty good speeds. Some even got more than what they're paying for. I have a Comcast Xfinity. But not Nick Belafastoff, who lives on Seattle's Capitol Hill. He says he pays for 50 megabits per second but his speed's registered in the mid-30s. Which is not okay. We're already getting the best that our area has to offer. Remember Melanie in Tacoma? She says she pays CenturyLink for 20 megs, but consistently got about half that. That's not what I'm paying for. And it drives me freaking nuts. I have uh, Comcast Xfinity. Quaint Dodson in Bothell says he pays more than 100 bucks for 75 megabits, but he registered a fraction of that. Six to eight megabits per second in the single digits. I'm definitely not getting what I paid for. But it's not always as simple as blaming those internet companies. Got the box of tricks. Charlie Amadeus of GeekServe Tools of the trade. is an internet expert. He calls himself an IT, that's information therapist. Borderline therapeutic. You get a lot of anxieties when, uh, when your email goes down. Five years ago, if you didn't have email, you know, you might, you might lose some sleep. Uh, today, you don't have email, it's like having a mini stroke. He says there are some common problems that slow customer speeds down. And to show us, he diagnosed the problems on the fly. At Nick's house, his modem was on his townhome's third floor, so his first floor connection was limited. Charlie's recommendation? If you get an access point. Which helps boost the signal around the house. At Melanie's, Charlie found out she consistently uses multiple devices at the same time. With only 20 megs, that can bog down the bandwidth. Every device you have in a network should have at least 5 megabits allocated to it. So Melanie should run no more than four devices at a time, keeping in mind streaming can eat up more bandwidth. And at Quates, Charlie saw the router was a couple of years old, 
Plugging in an Ethernet cord showed Comcast was giving much faster speeds. The old router just uh, doesn't have what it takes anymore. There are other reasons for connectivity problems too. You could have a virus, your cordless phone could be transmitting on the same frequency, or you might need a firmware or software update. If it's not your router or your problem, internet companies can still get away with consistently giving you less than the top advertised speed. Remember those commercials? It's up to 40 megs of CenturyLink internet. That up to phrase is pretty common. It's ambiguous. Marketing is always ambiguous. We are willing to accept things when we don't understand them. Goodbye. It's a terrible shame. Enumclaw used to be such a nice community. So quiet, so peaceful. For me here, it started Monday. Dan Cleveland admits he may never be the same. I needed to see these beasts for myself. This is where they've been hanging out, right along this driveway. And finally, I see the terror. We won't get much closer. From a safe distance, I make out the ferocious faces of fear. I'll name them King and Kong. Their shaggy fur like the mane of a monster. Their bark, the howl of horror. They started barking at me, and then I saw them as they kind of came out onto the Driveway. The dogs are on the road holding up traffic. We've had a couple of near fender benders out there. It's terror with a wagging tail. And there's a guy down there with a butterfly net trying to catch one of them. Here to stop them, the long arm of the law with an even longer net, King County Animal Control. We watch as the mission crumbles. It appears that it's going very poorly. Animal Control resorts to plan B, a crate and 13 ounces of irresistible goodness. Lamb. Kong was curious. Or was that king? I'm too scared to even think straight. All I know is the other one laid there in the sunlight, throwing terror in our faces. On a scale of one to 10, how scared were you? One being scared, 10 being mortified. Too scared for words, I take it, while King and Kong have the last laugh. <laughs> and bark. <laughs> Obviously, it's a slow news day. <laughs> At a house of clocks in Linwood, let's take a second to talk about how we tell time. Are you analog? I've found that I'm a little bit more old school. Or digital? What time is it? It's 1, it's 8, <laughs> time keeping and learning how to tell time is important to me. It's tradition against technology. Easier looking at my phone. Oh, wait, what was the time for this one? And as technology okay. advances, that would be 10, and then where's 40? It seems it's tougher for some youngins to read analog clocks. Okay, we got that one wrong. We got plus zero on that one. Even teens have a tough time getting their arms around small and big hands. Go! It's me! This race at Bellevue's Boys and Girls Club okay, uh, is where timekeeping two. and competition collide. Oh. <laughs> we kind of had an accident. Last week, an online watch retailer asked the kids here to take a time-telling oh, test. Count it out. Nope. Uh, only about a third. Uh, keep messing up. Pass. It's been like five years since we are learned this, so we're a little bit rusty. Whoa, buddy. Consider this a refresher course for the kids and the adults. <laughs> Do not put that on there. No, you said even you have to cheat. Even I have to cheat. Six. These games and the online retailer's promise of a watch donated to them is enough to keep their attention for now. I don't really have to like think about it. So there's new school, there's old school. It's definitely generational. Then there's... This is a little bit older school than uh, what my daughter calls a round clock. This is a sundial here at Gasworks Park in uh, North Seattle. Daniel Winter tried this ancient technology. It should be about 10.15. It did not come second nature. Ooh, I'm a little slow, 10.45. Oh well, I got nowhere to go. Now he knows how his seven-year-old daughter feels. If you show her a round clock, she stumbles and she's like, ah, uh, and then she'll run and look at the stove. But Daniel asks... So. Who cares? I don't really think it's important. As long as you get places on time. Oh, you grow up doing things a certain way. You feel that it's important that your children learn that way too. This changed stuff for you? Yes. <laughs> There's no doubt times are changing. And as the clock marches onward, the past tries to survive in the present. Technology is taking over, it's true. 
with photojournalist. I'm Ryan Takeo, King 5 News.